Hello students. I welcome you to this session of Python programming. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the if-else statement. In our previous session, we discussed about the if statement and the two new additions uh, to the if code in Python, that is the colon character and the indentation that is required to write the Python statements in a block. We don't need to uh, mark the beginning and end of block, only we need to you know indent at least one space towards the right of if or one space towards the right of else, the statements which are included in the if and the else block respectively. So let's discuss if else statement today. Uh, obviously if else statement is required when we have two alternatives and we need to choose one out of it. So the syntax for if else would be like this. Uh, we have a if which is followed by a condition which we require to test and if this condition is true then the statements which are there indented here uh, which we can call the true block statements would be executed and after that the statement following the else block or the false block statements they would be skipped and the next statement after the if block would be executed. I repeat, if this condition here is true, then these two block statements are executed and the false block statements are skipped. If this condition here is false, then these conditions, two block uh, statements, they are skipped and the else block statements, which we are referring here as false block statements, are executed. In any case, we once we come out of this if block, the next statement that follows if is executed. So in my today's session, I will be discussing a few programs about the if statement and the if else statement with you. So now we can see this uh, examples. Uh, I have taken up a few examples. You can try more on your own. Uh, we will be writing these programs to check whether a given number is even or odd, to print greater of two numbers, to print greater of three numbers, to print square root of a number uh, if it is positive. Otherwise, if the number is negative, we can print the imaginary square root. So let's start a Python interpreter session. Okay. And let's uh, try to write the first program that is to check whether a number is even or odd. Okay. So I have an outline of a program here for you so that we save time. So we are going to input a number. Remember the eval function, it will automatically you know decide the type of the number that we are inputting. And without eval obviously uh, the input statement always you know lets you input a string. So uh, this eval will determine what type of input is there. So now you remember the percentage operator that we discussed in arithmetic operators which gives the remainder after integer division of two operands. So if we take the integer division of a with 2 and if the remainder is equal to 0 that means a is divisible by 2 that means a is even and if the modulus of a with 2 returns 1 that means number is odd. So we can use this logic to write this program here so a percentage 2 if it is equal to 0 you can see the indent which has come automatically you can print here print you can print the value and then a suitable message. So copy this statement from here. And then obviously else should be directly below f. This indent is automatically there. And then you can write a is odd. And then you can finish your program. Now we can save this program and we can run it. So once executed, it will prompt you to enter the value of the number. So if I enter say 16, so obviously it will say 16 is even. If I run it again and if I provide the number as 21, it will say 21 is odd. So here we see how we can take the help of if else statement. So when this condition is true, then this statement is executed. And after that the program come, comes out of the if block. And if this statement is here is false, then this statement is executed. Let us now extend this program to print greater of two numbers. Okay. So let me just make a few changes in this program so that we can calculate 
the greater of two numbers. So obviously here logic would be that if A is greater than B, this is our condition. So obviously if A is greater than B is true, that means A is greater. So we can write here A is greater. Otherwise we can write here B is greater. So how, I hope you understand this, that if A is greater than B, if this condition is true, that means A is bigger. So we print A is greater. And else would mean that this condition, A greater than B is false. So that would mean B is greater. So if this is false, then the else block statement is executed. So we print B is greater. So let's now run this code here. Let me enter the number as 4.5 and 7.8. So obviously it will print 7.8 is greater. We can extend this code to uh, for three numbers also. Okay. So what we can do here is we can add another number here. Give it the name as C. Now you see A would be greater than B and greater than C. Only then it would be the greatest. So we can put an AND condition out here. AND A greater than C. So that would mean that A is the greatest. And now uh, obviously for this type of program where we have multiple you know expressions to check uh, there would come the necessity of the else if statement which we haven't discussed so far. So I will discuss it here in this program itself. Else if statement is written uh, as elif statement here in Python. So we can write here elif and then we can check whether B is the greatest or not. And then we can add an else clause here to print that C is the greatest. So we can change these messages here so that they are more appropriate. So we check here if both these conditions are true. In relational operators we learned that in AND if both the conditions are true then the overall condition is true. So here if A is greater than B and simultaneously A is also greater than C, then obviously A is the greatest. We print A is the greatest. Elif would mean we would come here when this condition, any one of this or both of them are false. So we shift to Elif. Now we check whether B is greater than A and B is greater than C. If that is so, if it is true, then this is printed. And else would mean that none of the conditions above were satisfied. So it would mean that C is the greatest number. So let's run this code now and see how it behaves. We have missed out something. Yeah, we didn't put a colon out here. So you see, if you miss certain things, then your program is going to give you warnings or errors. Now this colon is fine here. Now we can try to run this. So we can give the first number, say 15, the second number as 8, and the third number as 36. So we get the answer, 36 is greatest. Let, let us give it uh, another run. Okay. Say that the number is 34, 5 and 23. So we get 34 is greatest. So that is how you can write this else if statement that you've learned in C, C++ as an elif statement. So when you have more than two alternatives, multiple alternatives and you need to execute only one out of them, then you need to take the help of this elif statement in Python. Let's now focus on the last program that we wrote there in our presentation that is to print the square root of a number and if the number is uh, negative then we should print the imaginary square root. So what you can do is we can just import our uh, square root function from the math module so that it is available easily. Let a be the number whose square root needs to be calculated. So let's input a. And if a is greater than 0, then obviously we will calculate and print its square root simply like this. And we will print the square root. We will print the square root. And in our else part, what we can do is, else it would mean 
that our uh, number a is negative so obviously we cannot calculate its square root so what we do is uh, we can import another uh, function here uh, let's check on this uh, i think we had a math dot abs function here Mm, or oh, we had an ABS function just like this. Yeah, we can have a we can use an ABS function directly, so no need to import anything. So what we can do here is we can directly calculate the square root, but we can first convert. Uh, we, we can remove the negative sign from A, so we can use something like this. So now, uh, if a is negative, say a is minus 64, this ABS function would make it 64 and the square root 8 is calculated. So, but we know that the number is negative. So we can give a message accordingly as per uh, our uh, requirement. We can give a message. Square root is, okay. And then we can add square root is we can add b here and then we can add an i here right so square root of minus 64 is 8 iota you understand this okay so we can write our program like this so let's uh, revisit this program first we input the value the number whose square root is to be calculated obviously we need the square root function so we from the math module we import it then if uh, the number is greater than 0, we simply calculate its square root and we print it. Else, otherwise, it would mean that the number is negative. So, we uh, first convert it to a positive number using the ABS function and, and then calculate its square root. And then we print it and add an i to indicate that this is an imaginary number and the number whose square root was calculated was a negative number. So, now we can run this code and we can uh, input the value as say 64. So we get the answer as 8 and uh, again we can run it and this time I can give the input as minus 64. So you can see the 8 iota is returned here. Okay. So this is uh, this is how you can you know run your uh, if statement, the if else statement and the elif uh, statement which is for you know multiple alternatives uh, when they are provided and you need to just run one out of them. So that is all for today's session. Uh, in my next session with you, I will come up with some more problems on uh, if statement. Uh, till then, keep watching. Thank you very much.